Mai ka ho'opuku ana o ka lai ka hiki na i ha'e ha'e i Hawai'i, a hiki na po'o ana o ka lai ke komohana o nga kulukulu o ka hiki nei, e aloha mai no kako. Aloha mahalo ya nga kupuna o nia whenua, ya nga po'e maohi o nia mau aina o moana nui, ya nga po'o amena lima o kia aha no kakako, kono mai kako e hui nei, e hui nei nei e kuka kuka i nga mo'olelo o moana nui. E aloha mai, e aloha mai, e aloha mai. Until 1892, when the first printing press was established in Hawaii, Hawaiian mo'olelo, story, history, and literature, was translated, I'm sorry, transmitted for gener generations across ta and va through story performance, storytelling, chanting, singing, dancing, and dramatic performance. As Teresa Teiva points out, our traditional knowledge is also written or visualized in cultural arts, including geometric tatao and textile designs, weavings, applique, carved images and adornments, and intricate, intricate canoe and post-lashing pattern, post patterns. In traditional times, a chant beginning with the call iku mau mau was employed when a group worked together to accomplish a difficult task. Enacted via call and response, the group responded with a collective unified iku wa. So iku mau mau, stand together. Iku wa, stand and shout. The call to work together through the expression of individual voices that contributed to the collective is an apt metaphor to describe Kanaka Oivi, Native Hawaiian literature and politics, Mai Kapo Mai from the ancient past, Mai Nakupuna Mai from the ancestors, and Mai Kavaha Mai from oral traditions, literally from the mouth. Iku Mau Mau has been adapted over the decades as a rallying cry for unity and aptly describes the continuing political underpinnings of Hawaiian literature. Iku Mau Mau Iku Wa. Iku Mau Mau Iku Hulu Hulu Ikalanavao Iku Wa. Iku Wa Huki Iku Wa Ko Iku Wa Amau Amau Ka E Hulu E Huki E Kulia. Stand together, stand and shout. Stand together as one, pull with all your strength. Stand up, shout and pull, stand in place, push the branches and all. Pull, pull, strive. Hawaiian arts, including literature, have always been political, as Alohalani shared earlier. In my work, I discuss the development of Hawaiian literature as a strategy of political consciousness, or Oivi literary nationalism. Oivi literary nationalism is writing that implicitly contains an expressed desire to uplift, encourage, and support the Lahui, the Hawaiian people or nation. Such efforts came into sharp focus in the 1880s through the 1890s when Hawaiian sovereignty was continuously under threat and then overthrown. During this period, Oivi Maohi, or Hawaiian Tahitian writer Mose Manu, whose father was from Paufai in Fa'a'a, used the term mo'olelo kalai aina, political writing, to specifically point out the intentional political nature of such Hawaiian nationalist writing at that time by Kapo'e Aloha Aina, literally translated, the people who love the land, who galvanized around the call for the restoration of Hawaiian sovereignty in the 1890s, a foundation of Hawaiian identity that continues to the present and reflected in our writing as composition of Hawaiian literature is just one strategy of affirming our identity and relationship to our aina and express aloha aina nationalism. Oivi literary nationalism is deeply rooted in Te Po, who we just heard about in Maori context, the pre-colonial ancient past. 
However, it has been adapted into a practice of writing for over a century. It continues maka'olelo Hawaii in the Hawaiian language, but also in the forcibly imposed colonial language of English, in Hawaii Creole English, or pidgin. Traditional mo'olelo form the kahua, the foundation of contemporary Hawaiian literature in English, what Selena Marsh calls epimith epistemithology. I'm still learning that from yesterday. In composition, practice, and performance, contemporary Oevi literature expresses ku mau mau, standing together, unity of writers, texts, themes, motifs, styles, etc., standing together with a cohesive political purpose to uplift the lahui, work towards self-determination and well-being with the healing, restoration, and flourishing of our aina or land. Kanaka Oivi continue to evoke traditional stories and compose new ones that directly address and respond to conditions of settler colonialism, including, but not limited to, military occupation, theft of lands, climate change and ecological threats, economic peril, displacement from our homeland and diasporic experience, and attacks on Hawaiian culture and identity. Simultaneously, we continue composing works that celebrate the beauty, diversity, complexity, and continuity of Hawaiian people and our familial kinship connections to our lands. Thus, Oevi literature has always provided and continues to provide a foundation of knowledge and suggests a course of action, particularly in times of tremendous social, cultural, and political upheaval. By pointing out this aspect of Oevi literature, I assert that reclaiming it from the settler colonial imaginary and insisting on it being re-centered in the pico or navel of an indigenous consciousness for current and future generations of the Lahui Hawaii is one that seeks to affirm these kinship connections with our genealogical connections across Moana Nui that is paramount. Oevi scholar Puanani Warren argues that for Polynesians, all life begins in Te Po. Quote, the boundless cosmogonic blackness from which the universe emerges and to which all indigenous Pacific people are genealogically connected, unquote. Mo'okuauhau, or genealogies, connect the people to Te Po and also contain our histories. Thus, they were carefully memorized, stored, and transmitted in and through Hawaiian bodies via memorization, performance, including storytelling, recitation, chanting, singing, dancing, production of artistic forms such as tattooing, petroglyphs, copper printing, etc. Stylistic and aesthetic meivi, or devices, developed through oral practice that continues in written literature include helu, or listing, and pinai, repetition, as each name recounts and encapsulates historic figures and events, evoking the recollection of the actions and accomplishments of the named individual remembered through recitation. Collectively, the list or listing of names Providing, provides a comprehensive, if not complete, native historiography. Such histories were also contained in mele, chant, or poetry, some of which, like mele inoa, name chants, celebrated the genealogy, characteristics, and accomplishments of illustrious ancestors. Ko'in honua, or cosmogonic genealogies, demonstrate a sophisticated worldview of an elevated society with a deep intellectual history. Chiefly, genealogies asserted one's right to rule and were carefully recorded and vigorously defended, analyzed, and debated. Kumulipo, a koihonua composed for the birth of High Chief Kalani Nui Iya Ma Mao circa 1700, details his lengthy human and pre-human lineage back to the creation of the universe itself. Through 16 wa, or eras, 
across 2,102 lines, Kumulipo recounts the birth of the Hawaiian universe culminating in the birth of Kalani Nui Ia Ma Mao. Tracing his lineage to the very origins of the universe ensured his right to rule and set his kuleana, or responsibilities, to manage the aina slash family. The meivi, or poetic composition of the chant, emphasizes ekoa, dyads, that stress pono, balance, harmony, and are presented using helu, listing, and pinai, repetition, and thus is an excellent example of culturally based oivi artistic and literary aesthetics. The 16 wa, or time periods, are divided evenly into po, or night, the time of the gods, and the birth of flora and fauna. And ao, or day, where illustrious oivi lineages emerged and stars are named. It is the basis of many literary compositions from the time it was first transcribed into writing in the late 1870s until today. The role of Mo'olelo in shaping Oivi political consciousness continues through the period of colonization and the development of Western literacy and print. When print technology was introduced in Hawaii in the 1830s, Hawaiians quickly realized its ability to express their own political purpose and began publishing their own works. And I repeated myself in the next sentence. In doing so, for the first time, traditional Hawaiian knowledge was preserved and retrievable outside the body, enabling broader transmission across place and time. While this fixed the vibrant performance-based oral traditions, print also preserved knowledge. Hawaiian statehood in 1959 was immediately followed by a cultural and political renaissance in the 1960s and 70s, a period marked by a renewed focus on reclaiming language, culture, and identity. Oivi writers such as John Dominus Holt, Imai Kalani Kanahele, Puanani Burgess, Mahalani Perez Went, Wayne Kaumuli'i Westlake, Dana Naone Hall, Haunani K. Trask, and others created a foundation of contemporary Hawaiian literature that was a weaving of traditional Hawaiian aesthetics, themes, and politics with introduced Western literary forms. Hawaiian literature of this time period continued to value our connections to Aina, focusing on specific land use issues, such as stopping the bombing of the island of Koho'olawe by the US Navy, the return of stream water stolen and diverted for sugar plantations and other development in locations such as Waiahole, Oahu, and protesting the development of hotels and resorts that have destroyed sacred cultural sites, to name just a few. Such themes of aloha and malama aina are intimately connected to themes such as self-determination and connection or reconnection to culture and aina. The revival of Hawaiian language as a living daily practice through the establishment of Hawaiian language immersion schools and the continuity of writing in Olalo Hawaii or Hawaiian, especially with mele, songs and poetry, combined with the use of new media, including social media, digital media, YouTube, etc., have helped Hawaiian literature to flourish. Oivi solidarity across other specific indigenous contexts, such as I Don't Know More and Ihu Matau, is embedded in our storytelling, reflected in what Chickasaw literature scholar Chadwick Allen calls trans-indigenous, or quote, indigenous to indigenous comparisons that recenter the uninformed dominant settler culture and produce hierarchies of indigenous oppression or legitimacy or authenticity that serve only the interests of the dominant settler hegemony. Oh, I skipped something. Interest of the settler. Okay, let's stop there. Trans-indigenous practice works against this dominant settler hegemony. Thus, the point is not to replace or displace the study of specific traditions and contexts, 
but rather to complement these by augmenting and expanding broader global indigenous fields of inquiry to invite specific studies into different kinds of conversations and to acknowledge the mobility and multiple interactions of indigenous peoples, cultures, histories, and texts. There is a long-standing misconception that writing replaces orature and it is somehow more sophisticated in artistic, aesthetic, and philosophical expressions. However, particularly when considering the concept of story performance, writing, oratory, and story performance intersect, support, and inspire each other. I hope to show or share two short examples of this uh, in the few minutes I have left. The first is an animated video by Kamehameha School students put together in 2019. The other is a hip, how hip hop music has transformed how our youth learn about our traditional knowledges and practice, practices. Instead of being disseminated only through ancient forms such as chant or dance, or now long introduced forms such as writing, hip hop brings together the old and the new, the traditional and the innovative, using a form of resistance music from the common people of the streets integrating traditional themes and knowledge. So I'm going to stop right there with my written presentation and try to jump over onto video if the technology gods are with me. So what this does is reintroduce the animation, the kinesthetic imagery lost in print. I don't have time to share the hip hop version which remixes the beats and represents the same information. Like a minute? Just a minute, okay, sure. Okay, you sure? Okay, we're gonna try and I apologize for the this just gives you a, a quick sample. So in this hip hop version, it's the same written text from the past, but it's represented for our youth today. Okay, I'll go 
que como un cowboy boy. O calibolivo, o calibolivo, o calibocala, 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 o I found them this night by this birth from darkness. Okay, so then it goes into contemporary hip hop representation in poet couplets. And in conclusion, since we had technical difficulties. Our literature is still very vibrant. It's still reflective of our vibrancy and diversity. And I thank you for your time and attention today. Mahalo, maururu.